You may say you do deal really well with stress at work, and that may be true, but it still has a cost to you. So if you're, maybe you deal with this stress really well when you're at work, but then when you're hanging out with friends, you cave into, you know, uh, drinking and overeating, or maybe you get into fights with your spouse or girlfriend, boyfriend. So it's cumulative. You may compartmentalize mentally, but physiologically it's cumulative. Are you a busy professional who's crushing it in your career or in growing your business, but you're struggling to lose weight and transform your body while fitting in your social life as well as your work obligations? If the answer is yes, well, let me help you get into the best shape of your life while thriving in your business. Go to legendarylifepodcast.com slash apply and schedule a 15-minute strategy call with me today. Welcome to the Legendary Life Podcast, where it's all about taking control of your health, losing fat, transforming your body, and living the life you deserve with celebrity fitness trainer and longevity enthusiast, Ted Rice. On today's Ask Ted episode, we're going to be answering the question, from Rizwani on Twitter. And he asks me, Ted, what's your go-to for managing stress? And what I'm going to share with you today is not just my approach to managing stress, but I also want to give you the framework of how I think about it, how I approach it, and how I hold myself accountable to make sure that I get the stress reduction that I need. So if you're a person who's under stress right now, if you feel like you're under a bit of stress, then you're going to want to listen to this episode. What is up, my friend? My name is Ted Rice, host of the podcast, health coach to entrepreneurs and other busy professionals. And before we dive into what I would call my simple five-step process to annihilate stress, I want to talk a little bit about stress to begin with, to frame this properly. Because when I was in my 20s, I mean, Before I was in my 20s and when I was in my teens, I didn't even know, I'm sure I heard the word stress, but it wasn't something that was on my mental radar. It's not a word that I could even think having a conversation about. It was just not something in my, like I said, my mental radar, if you will. As I got into my 20s, I became a personal trainer in when I was 22 years old in 1999. I've been doing this for over 20 years now, 23 going on 24 years. And I had the good fortune, I don't know if you know who this is now, He's, uh, but I learned from Paul Check. Paul was uh, one of my mentors when I first got into fitness uh, as a personal trainer, and I became a certified health coach under him. And Paul, it's a little tricky for me to tell the story because Paul has changed a lot and evolved into a lot of spirituality talking about spirituality. And it's not something I, I, I don't feel connected with him anymore and, and what he talks about. I'll just leave it at that. But at the time though, 23, 22 years ago, when I was learning from him, he started opening my eyes like, hey, health is a holistic thing. The stress at your work, the stress in your relationship affects and the stress that you put yourself under through lifting weights, it all affects, it's cumulative. You may compartmentalize things psychologically, but the stress is cumulative. You may say you do deal really well with stress at work, and that may be true, but it still has a cost to you. So if you're maybe you deal with the stress really well when you're at work, but then when you're hanging out with friends, you cave into you know uh, drinking and overeating, or maybe you get into fights with your spouse or girlfriend, boyfriend. So it's cumulative. You may compartmentalize mentally, but physiologically, it's cumulative. And another thing that's really important about stress is that it's not just some mental feeling. That's what I initially thought is, oh, well, stress, oh, I'm feeling stress. That's just a mental feeling. It's not really physical. It's just all in your head. But that's not true. You've heard of your nervous system. You, you know, you probably heard of your, you know, you've heard of your brain, right? And spinal cord is being part of your nervous system. That's your central nervous system. But you also have a few other parts of your nervous system. And I'm not going to go into those, all of them. But the part that's important here is you have something called your autonomic nervous system. 
And if you were to go to medical school or physical therapy school, now they do this and, and dissect a cadaver, you'd be able to see your autonomic nervous system. Where am I going with this? Hang on for the ride because I'll explain it to you. With your autonomic nervous system, there are two branches. You have your sympathetic branch of your autonomic nervous system and your parasympathetic branch of your autonomic nervous system. So there are two branches to this autonomic nervous system. Don't worry, I'm not going to test you at the end of this episode. I'm just trying to set some foundation so you understand stress better. And you actually, while sympathetic, your sympathetic branch of your autonomic nervous system and your parasympathetic branch, if you were to take a test in university in physiology, anatomy and physiology, like I did, because I studied, uh, I was doing all my pre-med requisites in university. I was either going to be a neuroscientist or a doctor of some type. So if you did, if you did the anatomy and physiology course, that's what they call it. Sympathetic branch, parasympathetic branch. But here's the thing. You already know these branches, or at least one of them. The sympathetic branch is known as your fight, flight, or freeze response. So if you've ever gotten really irritable because of some things that were happening, or maybe you read something on social media or saw something on the news, and it got you really irritable, that's your stress response. You got stressed. If that's the fight part. Let's say you were walking down the street and you're about to cross a road on the sidewalk and a car whizzes by, runs the red light, whizzes by because they're running late for work or whatever. Happens a lot in Miami where I w- was born. And you like you see it and you jump back. You weren't really about to be hit or maybe you were, but it was way too close for comfort and it made you jump back. That's, again, your stress response. But now that's an example of flight. And freeze, I don't. That's what's, I'm trying to think of a good example here, but have you ever heard, oh, they were like a deer in headlights. That's the freeze response. Something is coming at you and you freeze because you're not sure, should I fight it? Should I run? I'm not sure what to do. And so you freeze. Those, that's your stress, res- your, your um, sympathetic stress response, fight, flight, or freeze. Now, everyone knows that you've all experienced that. But there's another thing that you've also experienced, but maybe you didn't know the name of. So the parasympathetic branch is your rest and digest branch. Very interesting. So meditation causes your parasympathetic, your rest and digest branch to be activated. Sleep does that. Meditation, I already said that. Getting a massage does that. So so if you're understanding, if you're following what I'm putting down here, we have these two branches of your stress response. We've got your sympathetic, your fight, flight, or freeze response, and then we have your rest and digest. And so the first step of my process is to pay attention to signs and symptoms of stress. So if I'm getting irritable and argumentative, like if I'm spending a lot of time on social media and people are like, oh gosh, that's so irritating. Or if I find myself irritated for any reason, I'm like, ah, my stress responses going over. And if I'm really irritable, I know I've waited way too long. Now I'm a type of guy who I tend to fight and I tend to flight. I don't really freeze that much. At least I don't think so. Maybe I do. And I'm just not aware of it, but I'm very aware of the fighting and the freezing. Right. And I'm also aware of when I'm feeling good. I'm like, wow, I feel so relaxed right now. And really interesting, pay attention to the name, the rest and digest, rest and digest. What we know is that if you're too sympathetically stimulated, if you've got too much fight, flight, or freeze going on, it can disrupt your digestion. You can get irritable bowel syndrome. So folks, what I'm trying to say here is that this is not in your head, or it is in your head, but it's in your brain. It has to do with levels of neurotransmitters like norepinephrine, and it has to do with stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. So this is this your stress response is a hormonal response, and actually, so is um, so is your parasympathetic branch. It it runs on acetylcholine. We're not going to get into what that is, but it slows down your heart, slows down a lot of processes. So pay attention to signs and symptoms of stress. If you're feeling like you're irritable, if you're feeling like you're 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 flighting, 
Maybe you feel maybe you're not going to run away from your business or your relationships or your family, but sometimes you might feel that way. That's a sign and symptom of stress. If you're escaping into like what I used to do, playing video games for hours or smoking marijuana, I was stoned every day when I was in my late teens, maybe 18 to 27, I was stoned every single day. That's how I managed my stress. I was flighting. People eat because they're flighting from stress. They overeat specifically. People eat because they're hungry and they need food to survive. But if you're overeating, you're probably flighting from stress and freezing. Maybe you're, maybe you need to take care of something, but every time you think about it, it's just so big. I remember when I was uh, in debt, Uh, I got myself in debt for like $10,000 in debt, just traveling around the world doing, uh, I was in my 20s traveling around the world. I I had a bunch of things that I was doing, traveling around, doing seminars to learn better techniques, actually going to Paul Check's uh, coach certification in San Diego. It was expensive to go to, it was a few thousand bucks to go to. Then I had to do thousands of dollars of prerequisites. Then I had to pay for my flight and my, so anyway, I was in debt. And I just, I'm like, I thought about the debt and it was just freezed. I just pretended it wasn't there. Can you relate to any of this? And I want to ask you, what are the signs and symptoms of stress in your life that you can pay attention to now that you see happening right now? How big are they? Are you one of those irritable people? Now, very interesting about this. I want to just say one more thing is that we, we, some of us were, we know like, oh, well, I'm not an irritable person, but I'm feeling irritable. Now, other people are just, hey, I'm just an irritable person. And what I want to tell you is I used to be one of those people. And here's where that came from. As you know, if you've listened to this podcast, you know some of my life story. My brother was murdered. My sister committed suicide. My mother died in a car accident. It's a lot of what you might call trauma, a lot of stress. I, After my brother was murdered, I had PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And so what happens to a lot of people is they undergo some some intense stress in their life, and it heightens the level of their fight, flight, or freeze response. So most of us that haven't had that are walking around normally, and then we'll get stressed, and then we'll get irritable. Some of us have been through something that was so intensely stressful that our nervous system, the activation of our fight, flight, or freeze response remained elevated and didn't come back down. So I was diagnosed with PTSD from a psychologist after my brother was murdered. And that's how I started to learn about this stuff. It's like, oh, well, I'm hypervigilant. I I respond to things, I'm very sensitive to stress. And the reason is because my because I was already stressed out just from what I had been through. And I want to say this one more thing before we move on here, because I think it's important. What happens, so we we talk about in the West post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Another way of thinking about it though, and something that I've been thinking about more recently is that it's not necessarily a disorder. It's that the things we go through in life train our nervous system. For example, if you went through something, if you've had a family member murdered, you might feel like, well, the world's a dangerous place. People get murdered. I had a family member murdered. And so your stress response is more activated. Why? Because you're more ready to respond to threats. So it's not so much you have a disorder, you're having a normal reaction to an event that happened into your life because now your nervous system is trying to say, hey, you live in a dangerous world. You need to be on the edge, ready for action at any time. Are you with me on that? The good news is you can also retrain your nervous system to calm down. Because the reality is, yes, people do get, uh, there, there's violence in our world and some of us will either experience violence or know people who've experienced violence. But the reality is for most of us in, in uh, the modernized world, if you're living in the US, you're living in the safest time in history. If you don't agree with that, <laughs> go to Portugal or Spain or or. Asia and and learn about you know just a couple hundred years ago right or even uh, the history of the United States we're living in the safest times ever not in 
save his time in every city and every country. But if you're in the US, rates of violence are down, even though some other things like mass shootings might be up, the overall rate of violence is down. Okay, there might be a little spike in there because of the pandemic or a drop in there. I'm not sure of the statistics, but in general, violence is coming down. So we're living in one of the safest times in history. But if you go through something traumatic, it can feel like, you know what, I need to be ready to fight at any time. Okay. So two things there, pay attention to your signs and symptoms of stress. And if you've gone through something stressful in the past and you feel like you're walking around with this heightened level of nervous system activity, heightened level of fight, flight, or uh, freeze response, know that you're going to have to do extra work, maybe even therapy to bring it down to the right level. That's appropriate for our society because you don't need to be on the edge. Okay. Number two, after, (laughs) I know that was a lot for number one, right? I know, but I'm just trying to be comprehensive here. I want I want you to walk away from this thing like I've never heard somebody explain it in that way before. So number two is, I decide if I need excitement or relaxation. I want to give you an example. It's Tuesday today, I think. No, it's Wednesday. It's not Tuesday. Sorry. It's Wednesday when I'm recording this. Over the weekend, I did a private, my first ever private client retreat for my client, Glenn. He wanted uh, to level up, to have a breakthrough, and he got a massive breakthrough spending three days with me. He came in Thursday night and left Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. And it was amazing. But it was also, I don't want to say stressful in a bad way, because one a, a, a good point here is that stress isn't bad. It's chronic stress that's the problem. Your nervous system stays activated. Your fight, flight, or freeze response stays activated for too long. But stress, you need it to perform your best. Not enough stress leads to lower performance. Too much stress crushes your performance too. You got to get the right amount of stress to make you perform your best. So it's not a bad thing, but you have to manage it appropriately. It's about creating that balance between your fight or flight, fight, flight, or freeze, and rest and digest. So what do I need? Do I need some excitement or need some relaxation? So after the weekend, I felt fried. I didn't even realize it, but I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm really exhausted. We did scuba diving. We walked a lot of steps. We did kayaking. We had long conversations, hours of coaching, basically, and interspersed with really fun activities. And it was a, it was a weekend. And um, with Glenn, what I did was I I interspersed excitement and relaxation. So he did he did meditation and breath work and other things. And I did some meditation on my own. He was doing he was doing that with the person who I conducted the retreat with, Sabine who I'll have on the podcast sometime to talk about breath work and how emotions get stuck in us and how breath work r- helps release them. But what I'm, my point here is that after 4 p.m. after Glenn left, I was fried. I went and hung out with Sabine for a little bit. I was like, Sabine, we, I went and had a green juice and some falafel and quinoa o- over here at a restaurant in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, which is where I am right now. And I said, Sabine, I'm I feel great, but I'm feeling really exhausted. Like I need a massage. So I knew that I wasn't feeling fight, flight, or uh, freeze, but I could tell like I was really exhausted. So uh, that that's another sign of of too much stress, right? And also, I was struggling. It, It wasn't just the retreat. I was also struggling with jet lag. I think I'm over it now, but. When Glenn, uh, I had some disrupted sleep while he was here and it was like, I was up at four in the morning. I couldn't go back to bed. So I needed some relaxation and she was like, Hey, let me see if I can get a massage person for you. And so she was able to, and by Glenn left at 4 PM and by 6 30 PM, I was getting a massage, a 90 minute massage. Cause I knew I needed some relaxation and I wanted to sleep well that night. So that's an example of deciding if I needed stress. Uh, uh, excitement or relaxation. I want to give you an example of the excitement. I'm feeling good now. I slept well last night. My resting heart rate, by the way, uh, I'll throw this in as well. I use my aura ring to track my sleep and resting heart rate. So those are other signs and symptoms of stress that I pay attention to. And so I saw that my heart rate was around 49 for the past few nights, but I did 45 minutes of cardio yesterday. Boom. Today it dropped to 46. I'm feeling like a rock star. Can you feel the energy? 
It's not just coffee, folks, although I did have a delicious cappuccino this morning. So tomorrow, what I've done is I've scheduled a bull shark dive and not just diving with sharks, but a bull shark feeding dive. So I'm going to, I'm going to descend to the bottom of the ocean and with a feeder and they're going to feed bull sharks from their hand while, while they're swarming around us. That's going to be exciting, folks. That's what I'm into here because I, I can't just do a zip lines. Zip lines are boring for me. And I don't like jumping out of airplanes because I get really dizzy on the parachute ride. I love the free fall, but the parachute ride is extremely uh, uh, motion sickness inducing for me. So now I'm going to get some excitement in and I balance the excitement and relaxation. So that's, that's two. I'm always deciding, do I need excitement in my life? Do I need relaxation? I want to say this too. I need some excitement because I've been feeling a little bit lonely as I've gotten to Mexico. And I'm not lonely because I, I know Sabine here. I, I've, I know a lot of people here, but I'm just, I've been doing a lot of work and I'm feeling it's not even maybe loneliness. It's that I've switched. You know, I had a magical few months in Lisbon, had an incredible week in Paris, had an interesting week in Madrid. And here I am outside. I'm, I'm not in Europe anymore. And just I'm suffering some culture shock here. And like, I need to get over it fast so I can get back into the zone. And I'm feeling a little bit like, hmm, a little like needy, you know? And uh, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with feeling that way. But if I know if I get stuck in this feeling, feelings are bad. It's okay to feel bad, to, to feel lonely or sad or happy. It's good to feel all those things. But if I get stuck here, then that's a problem. Because I'm not going to do my work, I'm not going to serve my clients, and I'm not going to grow my business, and I'm not going to be enjoying my life like I want. So when I feel like that feeling kind of weak, you know, I, I schedule something exciting because it boosts my confidence. I did something tough, even though I've done bull shark diving before, and I've even done a bull shark feeding before. I haven't done it in a year, and thinking about it, it's like, ooh, and I'm going to be right next to the person. That's what the promise was. So we'll see how that goes. So those are some examples of how I approach, do I need excitement? Do I need relaxation? So if I'm feeling like I need a boost of confidence, I do something exciting. If I feel like exhausted, irritable, et cetera, I do something relax, uh, relaxing. The next is I schedule it immediately. As I just shared with you, when Glenn's retreat was over on 4 p.m. Sunday, by one hour and a half later, I was getting a massage and I scheduled it immediately. I didn't even feel like I had time to schedule the massage before. Actually, I tried to schedule a massage and the person that I normally get a massage from wasn't available. So I asked my friend Sabine, hey, can you reach out to a few people? I really need a massage. And I scheduled it immediately. And the bull shark dive, I scheduled that yesterday. I said, hey, I, got, I looked at my schedule. I have free time on Thursday. I asked my, the, the dive master that I go with, like, Hey, what do you recommend? He's like, well, it's bull shark season, baby. I said, okay, let's do it. Let's do a feeding. And so I scheduled it immediately. The fourth thing is I protect that time. I'm not going to, I, I've already let my team know, don't schedule anything from the time, from this time to that time, right? I'm going to leave. Ed's going to give me the final you know, time in the morning when he confirms it with me, but I'm going to protect that time. I'm not going to let anything be scheduled during that time. That's key, folks, because people are going to say, hey, can you do this? Can you schedule this in your calendar? No, I can't. I don't have time. I've already got something planned. Happy to do it later, right? And then number five is follow through. Following through means you're getting into a habit of making this a lifestyle. We are constantly learning through our habits. We are constantly training ourselves. So if you have the habit, for example, if you don't protect the time you let, oh, well, I guess I could reschedule that because this is really important. It's not that important. If you're business, if you're, unless you're like me, like if I died, it would be tricky to replace me. Or if I got sick, it would be tricky to replace me because it's a, I mean, it's my business partner. Actually, they could still replace me for sure, but I'm the guy who's doing the podcast all the time. There would be someone new and different. It would be hard shoes, at least I believe, at least I want to believe, it would be hard shoes to fill. But the reality is I'm replaceable and you're replaceable too, especially if you're working in a business and it's not a personal brand business. You're a bit of a number. So protect your time. That builds the habit of 
prioritizing yourself and then following through builds the habit of taking action. So those are some bonus tips here. All right. And just to recap what we've talked about, the first is pay attention to signs and symptoms of stress. Number two is decide if you need excitement or relaxation. If you're feeling like exhausted, physically exhausted, like the idea of doing something physical is like, oh gosh, I can't hit the gym. I have no energy. Or, oh, I'm really irritable. And, and just if I go to the gym, I'm going to get even more irritable because it's going to, oh God, I can't believe I'm working out. And, you know, so relaxation is what you need. But if you're feeling kind of weak and like, you know, like you need a boost of confidence, then you need some excitement, whatever that is for you. Number three is schedule it immediately. Number four is protecting that time. And number five is following through. And let me tell you, if you do this, you will annihilate your stress. And eventually you'll become a very powerful, but also calm person. That's what we're looking for. That combination of confidence and calmness or calm, cool, and collected, right? Calm, cool, and collected, that that saying. That's what we're looking for. Because a lot of people, what they do, they're, oh yeah, they try to act confident, but it's really aggressiveness. And that's not powerful. That's not coming from a place of of true power. And I don't mean power like power over people, but power over yourself. And then that calmness, it, people who are too calm are just, you know, they're like, you can, uh, you can tell they're a bit of a pushover. You don't want to be a pushover either. You want to have confidence and you want to be calm. And if you do these things, if you challenge yourself with excitement, if you bring down your the, the activation of your uh, fight or flight response with relaxation techniques, you will be this confident, calm person and your life will change. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Speak to you on Monday. Are you a busy professional who's crushing it in your career or in growing your business, but you're struggling to lose weight and transform your body while fitting in your social life as well as your work obligations? If the answer is yes, well, let me help you get into the best shape of your life while thriving in your business. Go to legendarylifepodcast.com slash apply and schedule a 15-minute strategy call with me today. And on Monday, I have another special episode for you. My client, Trevor, is back on the show to talk about his transformation in another success story episode. So listen, you may have heard his initial transformation story, but I got a bit deeper with Trevor in a conversation I was having with him. And I asked him, Trevor, what you're saying right now is so important for people to hear. Do you mind if I click the record button so that we can share it with people. And he said, sure, go for it, Ted. And so that's what we've done. And in case you don't remember his story, Trevor is a commercial real estate broker who transformed his body, improved the quality of his sleep, started waking up feeling energized, went from 17.5% body fat to 12.5% body fat in four months. And he did this all the while going through a massive career transition and navigating an active social life. And one of the things is Trevor now gets told he has the perfect body, he's got great genetics, he's got a great metabolism. But for Trevor, he didn't look this way. It was what he achieved in my program. And he's been in my program working with me for 10 months, even though he achieved that first transformation in the first four months. And I ask him, Trevor, now looking back, how do you see your transformation? What were the critical components that someone listening to you could take away and implement in their own life? So if that's interesting to you, you're going to want to listen to this story with Trevor. Tune in on Monday to hear it. Have an amazing weekend and speak to you then.